Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 9, which is carbonyl compound. And we're going to focus on the subtopic of 9.4, which is chemical properties, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to look into the identification test using 2,4-dinitrophenylherazine, or known as 2,4-DNPH, Tollens, Schiff, Fehling's, Benedict's reagent, and this is used in order to distinguish aldehydes and ketone from other organic compounds. Also, we're going to look into the iodoform test in order to identify the methyl carbonyl group. Okay, so without any further ado, let us look into the uh, test one by one. Okay, so now we're going to look into the Bredis test, which is the Bredis test is used to detect the presence of the carbon double bond with oxygen, which is a carbonyl group. So let's see if we have a carbonyl group, which is a ketone here, and then we're going to react that with one of the ammonia derivative, which is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. So the 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine is also known as the 2,4-DNPH, where D refers to di, nitro refers to N, P refers to phenyl, and H refers to hydrazine, which is, this is the reagents for the Bredis test. Okay, or known as the Bredis reagent. So when ketone and the or any aldehyde react together with the Bredis reagent, what we're going to produce is an imine. So we're going to produce C double bond N, which is an imine. So as a product of condensation, what we're going to remove is two hydrogen and also one oxygen from the C double bond O. So the byproduct here is going to produce. Uh, the major product here we're going to produce an imine, and the major product, uh, the byproduct, going to be water as a, uh, as a product of elimination. Okay, so from two dinitrophenyl hydrazine, what we're going to produce is two four dinitrophenyl hydrazone, and this is going to give a yellow or orange precipitate as shown in the uh, figure here. All right, so this this is how we detect the presence of the carbonyl group. Next, we're going to look into the oxidation test. So for oxidation test, we have the Tollens test, where the Tollens test is, is also known as the silver mirror test, where it is used to oxidize aldehyde, but not ketone. So the Tollens reagent include the aqueous silver nitrate and ammonia, which is AgNH3 2 positive, and the reaction happened at the basic condition. So, the product of the reaction of aldehyde with the echo silver nitrate and ammonia will become oxalic ion and silver metal. So by the end of the reaction, what we're going to see is the silver deposited on the wall of the test tube, or known as the silver mirror. So let's say if we have our aldehyde, because aldehyde gives the positive result. So aldehyde reacts with our echo silver nitrate and ammonia solution at basic condition. And this is going to give our carboxylate ion as well as the silver metal. So silver metal here is going to be precipitated down. And this is going to give a silver mirror kind of looking at the wall of the test tube. Alright. So now let us look into another example. Let's say if we have our propanol here. So propanol is going to react with the aqueous ammonia solution. At basic condition, and this is going to give a propan weight ion, which is a type of the carboxyl ion. And because it is an aldehyde, C double bond O H, which is aldehyde, it's going to give a positive result, which is a silver mirror. And let's say if we have the ben the phenyl methanol or the benzaldehyde, so when we react with the aqueous ammonia solution at basic condition. So we're going to get also a benzoate ion and also the silver metal, which is the silver mirror solution. So aldehyde is going to give a positive result. However, when I react that with, a, let's say, a ketone, which is a propanone, and I react that with the same solution, Equals at basic condition, it will give me no observable changes. Okay, because Tollens test is only used to detect aldehyde. 
Okay. Now we're going to look into the next test, which is the shift test. So for the shift test, uh, it also going to give a positive result for the aldehyde, where it going to react with shift reagent in order to give a pinkish purple or the magenta solution. So in this case, it is similar to the Tollens test, where it is positive for aldehyde and ketone going to give the negative result. Okay, so for the shift reagent, all aldehyde will react except for the benzaldehyde. However, it is a not a good confirmatory test as propanone, which is a ketone, also give a positive result. So it's not a really a good technique in order to differentiate aldehyde and ketone because somehow one of the ketone give positive result. Okay, but however, for this test, we are not required to do the equation. So we are just focused on the coloration and generally you can say that aldehyde gonna give pinkish purple but ketone gonna give a negative result for the reaction. So as simple as that. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to the next oxidation test which is the Fehling test. So Fehling test is used to distinguish aliphatic aldehyde from the aromatic aldehyde as well as the ketone. So, Fehling test only give a positive result on the aliphatic. So, aliphatic here means it is a straight chain alkene, uh, aldehyde. Okay, so it's going to be like 1, 2, 3, and then it's going to end with a aldehyde. So, if it is a aliphatic aldehyde, which is a straight chain aldehyde, then it's going to give a positive result. However, if it is a benzaldehyde, for example, a benzene ring or aromatic aldehyde, it's going to give a negative result. If it is a ketone, it's going to give a negative result as well. Okay, and same goes to another organic compound, for example, alcohol, it also gives a negative result. It, it is only give a positive result for the aliphatic aldehyde. Alright? So, the reaction with aliphatic aldehyde will produce a carboxylic ion and copper 1 oxide which is brick red in color. So, in this reaction, we're going to see that the copper 2 plus, which is the Fehling solution that we use, is going to be reduced into copper 1 copper one ions. So, that is why we can, we can see a change in color. So, let's see if we have our aliphatic aldehyde. And we're going to react that with our Fehling solution, which is blue in color. And then it happens at the basic condition. And this is going to produce a carboxylate ion as well as the copper 2 oxide. So the copper 2 oxide here, as what you can see, it's going to be a copper plus, And then it's going to be O minus. And this is why it got you a CuO here. Cu2O here. So it's going to be reduced from copper 2 plus become copper 1 plus. So from blue from blue color it's gonna become a brick red precipitate. And this shows the aliphatic aldehyde is present. Okay. Another example is the aliphatic aldehyde here. React with the copper 2 plus which is blue solution at basic condition gonna produce a carboxylate ion as well as the copper 2 oxide which is the brick red precipitate and the byproduct here gonna be water. However, when we use, oh yes, and this is the color here, which is from blue, it's going to become a brick red precipitate. So this shows that there is a aliphatic aldehyde. Okay, so this apply only for aliphatic aldehyde. Okay, now I'm going to show the example of the aromatic aldehyde, which is the... phenyl ethanol oh sorry this one should be H okay so this one one gonna be a benzaldehyde which is example of the aromatic aldehyde okay and then it's gonna react with the blue filing solution at basic condition and we're gonna see a no observable changes and now we have a ketone and then we're gonna react that with a filing solution at basic condition, we're going to see there is no observable changes as well. Okay, so it only gives a positive result for aliphatic aldehyde.
Okay. And not Pahling test. And if you heard about Benedict test, they will have the same equation and observation. So if, if the question asks you to use Benedict test, you know that the equation and the observation going to be the same as the Fehling test that you have learned. Okay, because it the Fehling will also use copper to plus, the Benedict will also use copper to plus at basic condition. It's just the source of the copper to plus is different. So Fehling, the copper to plus comes from the Tatarit complex. For Benedict, the copper to plus comes from the Citrate complex. Okay, but however, it is not really being emphasized. The important part here is the equation and the observation. Okay. Now we're going to look into the last test, which is the iodoform test. So the iodoform test is used to detect the presence of the metal carbonyl group. So the iodoform test is the same as the in the previous chapter. We're going to use the reagent of iodine in the sodium hydroxide aqueous solution. So metal carbonyl is basically C double bond O carbonyl group with a, attaching with the CH3 here, which is metal. And this is known, known as the metal carbonyl group. Okay, and in the previous chapter, you have look, also looked about the CH3 OH here. So this is known as the methyl alcohol or methyl carbinol group. All oh -ish. So this is the iodoform test can be used to detect methyl carbinol group as well as methyl carbonyl group. Okay. So iodoform test you have learned in chapter hydroxy compound, and you you will. Uh, we, we look again here, which is metal carbonyl group. So it can be used to detect both. Okay. And now we're going to focus on the metal carbonyl group. So let's say if you have an equation here, which is a CH3 C double bond OR. So when you react with the iodine at the basic condition, what you're going to get is the carboxylate ion. And then you're going to produce a CHI3, which is a triiodomethane, which is known as the iodoform. So this is going to give a yellow precipitate. Okay. Similarly, if you have an uh, example here, for example, if you have uh, aldehyde, which is the ethanol, when you react with iodine in aqueous sodium hydride solution, what you're going to produce is the uh, methanoid ion. So this, as what you can see, the CH is going to reduce by one carbon chain because the another CH3 here is going to be used in order to form the triiodomethane, which is a yellow precipitate here. Okay, so it doesn't matter as long as if you have your C double bond O, doesn't matter how long the carbon chain is, for example, CH2, CH3, CH2, 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 CH3, when it react with the same reagent, um, the carbon chain is going to drop down by 1. So we're going to get C double bond O, CH2, 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 CH3, and then O minus here. Okay? Because this CH3 is going to be used in order to form CHI3, which is a yellow precipitate. Alright, so as long as there is going to be a this a metal carbonyl group, that you're going to give a positive result for the iodoform test. Okay, so this is the summary of the chemical test that we have looked for to, de uh, to detect the, carb the carbonyl group. We're going to use the Bredis test, which give a orange precipitate. In order to differentiate any aldehyde with ketone, uh, we're going to use the tolerance test as well as the shift test. For where the shift test, we don't need to know any equation. Okay. So here, any aldehyde can be oxidized with the aliphatic or aromatic. However, for this, which is the third box here, it is used to differentiate uh, aliphatic aldehyde with aromatic aldehyde or with ketone or with any other uh, organic compound. 
So here only aliphatic aldehyde going to be oxidized. So we're going to use the Fehling test as well as the Benedict test. Okay, so both going to have the same equation and same uh, observation. And lastly, we have looked about the detection of methyl carbonyl and the methyl carbonyl group. So the methyl carbonyl group is something that we have looked at at hydroxy compound. And the methyl carbonyl group is we have looked in the carbonyl compound, which is in this chapter. So the iodoform test is going to be able to give a positive result for both the methyl carbonyl and the methyl carbonyl group, where it's going to give a yellow precipitate as the one I uh, colored the box here. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!